episode of Inside Boxing Live, Chris Algieri is here in New York City in the flesh, and we are ready to talk about Canelo's return. We are ready to talk about the Zoo Harrison fight. We're ready to talk about Fury Usyk. Are they going to fight, or are they just going to send Instagram videos of each other back and forth? Tank Ryan had a bunch of press conferences. Katie Taylor is going to be back. And we got nominated for the best boxing podcast out there. Let's go. What is up, everybody? Welcome into another edition of Inside Boxing Live. This is a product of John Boy Media, and we are going full recliner here. One, two, three. Yes! And we're ready to talk some boxing. If you were listening on a, uh, Apple Podcasts or wherever, that probably didn't make any sense. We're sitting in recliners. Chris is here in New York City. Ronnie's behind the glass. Literally, there he is, waving to us. Our son, behind the glass. He is Chris Algeri. I am Dan Canobio. Chris? Welcome to New York. You're from New York. How does it feel to be back in New York? It's freezing today. Takes a lot to get me back to New York in the cold months. I would only do it for you, Dan. I would only do it for you guys. So here we are. Here we are, ready to talk a lot of boxing. Before we get into the topics uh, that we just went over, we got nominated for Best uh, Combat Sports Podcast. And listen, we should win because we are the Best Combat Sports Podcast. But if we don't this year... It's coming. It's coming. See, if, if, if the Academy has already taken notice, <laughs> then forget it. I mean, it's just a matter of time. It's the Academy, also known as the Sports Podcast Group. So thank you to them for, for nominating us. Um, we're up against some, some real heavy hitters. I've uh, got it open right here. You have to go on to sportspodcastgroup.com and vote for us. We're going up against uh, Morning Combat, uh. our friend Brian Campbell. Good guy. Uh, Luke Thomas. We're going up against MMA Hour with Ariel Helwani. Uh, we're going up against Chris Maddox. Somewhat well-known, guys. Chris Maddox. George Groves has a podcast. Cool. Former world champ. Yeah. Uh, we're in the mix. So, yeah, we should win. So, go to that. Vote for us. Thank you for the nomination. Really appreciate uh, that. And we'll uh, have a link in our socials. Yes. For... We'll blast that out on, so on that, uh, that my a, Twitter, yeah. Chris's Instagram. Give that a vote. Uh, in between uh, the videos of Chris, the food that you're being eaten, we'll, we'll post a in nice... Between food and workouts and inspirational photos and... Yeah, things. feet pics. Well, no, no, that's on my OnlyFans. Oh, F. Only feet. Only feet. <clears throat> All right, let's get into the boxing news. Um, I guess we'll start with Canelo Alvarez. Biggest name in boxing. Good place to start. Uh, we knew he'd be fighting John Ryder, but now it's official. Uh, May 6th. And if that, that date rings a bell, it is one day before Inoue Fulton? Yeah, it's about eight hours before <laughs> It's going to be Fulton. in Guadalajara. Guadalajara. Did I get that pronunciation right, Ronnie? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yes, thank you. Guadalajara, uh, which Canelo hasn't fought since 2011. It's a homecoming fight. It's a stadium fight. That's the allure of this fight. A lot of people are doubting John Ryder's uh, in the ring, which I, I understand. I, he's going to be a sizable underdog. A lot of people are saying, oh, Ryan doesn't deserve this fight. But yeah, he does. Because he yeah. beat Zach Parker. He beat Danny Jacobs. He's the WBO mandatory for Canelo Alvarez. And I actually think he gives him a pretty good fight. I do too. I think stylistically, it's a it's a tough fight for anyone. That's just like a John Ryder kind of guy that he is. Um, he also steps up to his competition. Yeah. Oftentimes, we've seen him struggle against guys that he should definitely beat, even lose to some of them. And then we've seen him really overplay his hand, like against uh, Callum Smith, where a lot of people argued they won that fight. And Smith's a, a beast. I think he beat him. Especially now at 75. Again, you're, and you're one of those. Um, so, yeah, and, and I think just stylistically, body type, uh, for the weight class, John is uh, a lot craftier than I think he gets credit for, even though he's a, like a bruiser and he fights well on the inside. I, it's, a, you know, it's a tough fight coming off a hand injury. A hand surgery is no joke. To the wrist of the left hand, which is the, the, the big punch for, 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 for Canelo between the heavy jabs and obviously the left hook, so he throws to the head and to the body. Coming back against a sturdy guy like John Ryder, not an easy fight. Listen, he's active. That's the main thing. What's the biggest problem with boxing today? There's a lot of problems. But one of the biggest problems, I think, is inactivity yeah. from your favorite fighter. Guys fighting once a year. Uh, Jamal Charlo, I know he has a, a reason fought has won fights in the last two years canelo coming off a hand injury is still fighting in may yeah. we, after that fight with golovkin we did a whole show after and we talked about oh we're not going to see canelo for a year he has a hand injury he's back he's fighting his wbo mandatory 
if we want to see some big fights down the line in September or wherever, and we want to see him at 168, Canelo has to take care of his mandatories. And he's doing so in front of his home crowd. His home, he's back for the first time since 2011. 2011, he was a big name. He is a way bigger name than he is oh, now. Yeah, I mean, geez. he's the face of boxing. He's an international <clears throat> superstar. So I think there are a lot of casuals out there. I understand, like, oh, this is John Ryder. We're coming off of a Golovkin fight where Golovkin's 40 years old. Shell was former self. I want to see him fight Benavides. I want to see him fight b I want to see him fight anyone else. But really, who could Canelo Alvarez, like, logically or realistically fight here in May other than his mandatory John Ryder? Real quick, who did he fight in 2011 at Guadalajara when he's back at home? Kermit Cintron. Okay. So that was around the time when we sparred, him and I. Because I was, I think it was around. You kicked his ass. I think it was 2010. He said that, not not, not me. <laughs> you got the best of Canelo in sparring. <laughs> so. Release the tapes. That's what everyone does now. They release uh, sparring tapes. That's the I coolest mean, thing to do. Kel Brook is doing it with uh, your boy, Connor Ben. <laughs> These guys. Yeah. Uh, Connor Ben calling out another aging, <laughs> semi-retired fighter. Why is Connor Ben Pacquiao? It's the it's saddest a, thing I've ever nobody, heard. Nobody life. cares about that. What are we doing? Nobody cares about that. Kell Brook makes a little more sense, but I like the Kell Brook Ben fight. I don't like Kell Brook fighting anymore, but but it, if he is to come out of retirement and you could potentially piece up Connor Ben, that's a good fight. That's I like that. Yeah, yeah. Pacquiao, no, no, no. I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, but okay, but we're talking about Canelo here. So yeah, I I, I like this fight. And not only because I think it's a good style matchup that'll make for an interesting, interesting fight, and I think it's—I don't think it's going to be one-sided. Um, but also, I'm happy for John Ryder. He's a good dude, and this is a big opportunity. And I know he's going to he, again—he steps up to his his challenges. So I, I think this is going to let us see a, a, another version of him. And uh, you know, it's always good to get that that Canelo paycheck. Yeah, I always say meritocracy doesn't exist in boxing, but sometimes, sometimes it, it does, does because it this does. guy. He played the game right. He kind of did what Caleb Plant did. Caleb Plant won his IBF title, fought his mandatories, waited for Canelo to get to try to get that last piece, which he had. So he had a lot of leverage. John Ryder, not so much the same, but he, he fought Callum Smith. Yeah, arguably could have got the W or not. Fought Danny Jacobs, beat Danny Jacobs. Another close fight. Uh, fought Zach Parker. Zach Parker, injured whatever. Himself, injured, yeah. whatever. He won. Doesn't John matter, Ryder yeah. came up on top. He's now a WBO. He gets the biggest pay, the, the payday. I don't think there's anyone out there that's like, screw John Ryder. Like, no, no. They're happy for him to get this payday. It's what everyone strives it's for just, in boxing. You know what it is with people? They only want to see Canelo in the biggest fights, and especially when there's fights like David Benavides on the horizon. There's a rematch with Bivol that he's been talking about up and down at 68, 75, wherever, blah, blah, blah. I didn't take him seriously last time. I want to fight him again. Whatever. It doesn't matter. The guy's coming off an injury. He's been out of the ring. He's got a legitimate mandatory and a guy who's a, a stiff challenge. So okay. I, I'm okay with it. So I, th- I say judge I like Canelo it. for what he does after this. Judge him for what he does in September. If it's the Bivol rematch, I'll watch. I think a lot of people will. We have been on the record saying he should avoid that at all yes. costs. I uh, tip my hat to him, though. Got big, you got big balls for that. If he does it again, yes. Yeah, he's got big balls to take that on. Benavides gets past Plant. If, That's ca- the fight. if we get If we get Canelo Benavides in September, obviously everyone's going to say, okay, that's fine. John Ryder fight. In your hometown, coming off a hand. Well, no one even talks about that anymore. No, yeah, of <laughs> course. Really Everyone's right on to, to Benavides. So it's a it's a big story whenever Canelo gets in the ring. Uh, but, we're but all we, going to be watching. The only thing that does suck, I will say this, I kind of buried the lead here. It's a DAZN pay-per-view. That's not cool. And after the price raise. It's not cool that's at all. Tough. That's, it's, tough. that's really tough. This, I for sure, after they announced Joshua uh, Franklin's a regular zone subscription uh, fight. I was like, all right, they're going to do the same thing for Canelo. Canelo Ryder on pay-per-view is a tough sell. Well, lucky for us, after we win this award, we're going to be really rich. So I, I'm not worried about me, or I can write it off. I feel bad for the fans at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, uh, you know, we can, we can deal with it. So in the fight, fans at home, I mean, it's a little tough. But um, yeah, no, I mean, but but this this is nothing new for Canelo. I mean, we talked about the Yildirim fight on past shows many times. He fought like four times in a calendar year. Yep. And yeah, he fought a, he fought a Yildirim. But he went to Miami, which was cool. He did it there. He did it outside. Never been done before over there. It was also during COVID where we were just dying for anything. Dying for anything. They, they, I, I was on the call. I rented the entire hotel. You know, we, we, we had our own COVID yeah. hotel to, 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 to be out of, uh, which was fantastic. And then, uh, yeah, but before that, he fought Callum Smith. He, then he fights um, Billy Joe Saunders in a huge fight, Caleb which is Plant. a big, bad matchup. Caleb Plant later in the year. So, I mean, he stays busy, even though he's coming off the injury. It, it, it's almost like he didn't even miss a fight. 
He didn't. It's crazy. Well, it, there's... Not, not in most people's eyes, because you probably would have fought in December, and then I would be fighting again in May. But like for most people, most guys at that level, they fight once or twice a year. When, when, you're, when you're the face of boxing, you're the you're biggest star, you're going to have haters, and you're going to have people that love you. And I think both yeah. are pretty extreme with Canelo. If you're not he getting has... hate, you're not doing something right. Right. He has extreme fans that he can't do no wrong. Um, and that's to be expected with, when you're a fan. It's short for fanatical. And then he has the complete other side of the spectrum, the haters. Yeah. They don't give him any credit for what he did in all those fights leading up to the Mayweather fight, everything he's done after the Mayweather fight, the, the run that he had at 168. They'll, they'll poke holes in it all day long. And what they see right now is a guy that should be fighting a Benavidez or should be fighting whoever their favorite fighter is. But now he's fighting another Euro bum. Dude, and I'll, if you're, I'll, and I'll if take you're listening, I'm doing air quotes. John, I'm not calling John Ryder Euro bum, but this is another European type of fighter. Canelo doesn't take on like the slick black fighter. Canelo doesn't take on his own Mexicans. You know, th- there are detractors out there. I'll take all of them to the table for this fight because, again, he's coming off of an injury. He's coming off a hand surgery. That's a big deal. From a guy who's had hand problems and hand surgeries before, you never know how a hand's going to react. It's whatever. John Ryder is, is, is a solid guy who's earned his spot. As long as Canelo fights somebody real in September, then there's nothing wrong with this fight. We'll see. Is, is you consider B-ball someone real? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> super real. Super. I don't. We, again, we don't like that fight, but it's a very real fight. Speaking of B-ball, uh, he is not. Excuse me. That's Better BF. Better BF has been ordered to fight Callum Smith. Smith. Yes. So we're we're not getting Better BF B-ball probably this year unless Canelo probably if Canelo fights Benavides or someone else at 168 or Plant. Maybe this opens the door for uh, better be of B-ball if better be of gets past Calum Smith. You get that equation? <laughs> it's a lot going on there. One seventy-five. A lot of boxing math there, but um, do you like better be of uh, Calum Smith? Yes and no. No, because it potentially puts a wrench in Bivol better be of ever happening. I don't think we're gonna get it anyway, but right. Um, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm holding out for that one. I want that fight to happen so bad. The better be a Bivol fight. Um, I'm a big fan of Cal Smith, though. Was a really big fan before the Canelo fight. That one that one tarnished me to him a little bit because I thought he could have done more. Just punching that arm. I mean, it's a beautiful tactic from, from Canelo. Um, but <laughs> Cal Smith can beat better be a. I'm, I'm not sure he will, but he can. He has all the, the makings of someone he's who on can. A, he's got a lot of momentum. Yeah, he's got a lot of momentum. He had, at be at, 75, he, at 75, he's an yard. absolute monster. Smith is highlight reel at the highlight reel knockout. And he's long, he's strong, he can punch. All the reasons why I gave Joe Smith a chance against Better BF, Callum Smith can do, and he does better. I like it. I don't hate it. Uh, it's obviously not what all the fans want. It's a good fight to add to the schedule. It's a really good schedule. In, in terms up. of boxing, no, it's not It's not a hateable fight at all. It's a good so fight. who does Bivol fight next then? Yeah, he's got. He wants Canelo. He's got Canelo. On but that's mind. September, though. He's got. A, he hasn't fought yet. Well, he fought in November against Zerto. Yeah, he's fighting this weekend, and I refuse to talk about it. <laughs> which, <laughs> which was a big, a big win, honestly. So who does B-ball fight next? One of his. He's uh, got a. He's he's mandatory. he's right. He's in the middle of his earn, uh, highest earning potential. He's one of the bigger stars in the sport now because he beat Canelo. He's got to fight someone. I guess he could find someone at 168. Well, he. I mean, he has to fight somebody and soon. If he wants yeah. to put himself in the running for September, he's got to fight. Yeah, does he, does he does he just sit out? We're halfway to April. He might. Let me Google him right now. He might. Uh, yeah, B-Ball doesn't have anything on the books. Uh, Zerto Ramirez is fighting Gabe Rosado this weekend. Yeah, I know. I Why? Know. This mm-hmm. this fight means makes no sense to me. I, I don't like seeing a fighter like Gabe Rosado, who I respect a ton, going up and wait again. Fighting a guy like this, this this late stage, I don't know. I, yeah, that's it. That's all I want. I want, I don't want. I want one minute on this fight because I think it's Gabe Rosado should he shouldn't fight anymore, and now he's going up to 175 against a guy in Zerto who comes in the ring at 205. Yeah, he's huge. He's essentially fighting a heavyweight. Yeah, he's huge. Who is allowing this to happen? Why is Golden Boy doing this? <sighs> I don't know, but I hope I hope Gabe hope make us making some big money. Dude. I hope he's making enough money. That's right, because it's just it's too, it's just a step too far. And a lot of fans are echoing uh, the same sentiment. Not seeing any any boxing news for for Bivol. All I see is that Joshua Buatzi rejected a one million dollar fight for Bivol. Says Eddie Hearn. Wow. Buatzi is now going over to boxing. Boxer, I saw that. He has left. He has an interesting case. Buatzi, thirty years old, turning down fights left and right. 
now leaves Matchroom, which has all the good fighters at 168, 175, to fight on boxer doesn't really have you might get more visibility on sky know. sports I or had maybe him, not title fights i had him on guest comms uh for nice guy on undercard yeah great great guy great guy um had my guest comms from one of the undercard fights and we, we were kind of talking about his career and he was asking me about how to move and certain things um and yeah i was telling him mean, you're, you're right there and it's like and I, I basically was just saying what i said to everyone i'm like hey when the opportunities come you gotta take them because how do you not how do you turn down the people because they don't they don't come often if that's true, I mean, it is a proposal. We never know. We never know. Hurt. We never know. Yeah. But like, that's a fight that could be made if if Boatsy would have stayed. He with seemed Matt like through. he wanted everything when I was talking to him. So every fight possible. So I don't. I don't. I, we ne- you never know the 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 veracity of the things that are out there. So. Would you rather make more money? I know. I know this answer because I know you. Would you rather make more money or or win a title? Title and, and make less money. Title. I think Boatsy chose more money. Hey. It's uh, it's 2023 and inflation's real. <laughs> Banks are <laughs> freaking collapsing. Inflation, yeah. our pets' heads are There's falling a... off. <laughs> There's runs on banks. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna get into that. Um, what else we got going on in the boxing world? Tim Zhu, Oof. what a win Oof. over Tony Harrison. I put money down. I'm back in the win column. I put money down on a you, zoo you beat stoppage. Me on that one, yeah? A zoo stoppage. Um, I thought he looked phenomenal. This makes a fight with Charlo even bigger. Uh, I think this is a perfect test for Zoo to stop, silence the haters, silence the doubters. Most importantly, get solid rounds against a tough professional in Harrison, who clearly uh, a little long in the tooth, best days behind him. But Tim Zoo now, I think a Tim Zoo charlo fight is huge now. I'm, I'm ready for it. First and foremost, ton of respect for Tony Harrison. Has taken on the toughest fights. Yeah. Tip the cap. I, tip the cap. I said going into this fight, um, <clears throat> this was going to be – the coming out party for Tim Zhu if, if he gets the win. It's right. a huge win, and he looked phenomenal. He did really, really well. And I said he's, he was a very technical. He's very technically very good. He's very strong. He's great momentum. Um, I think he's the real deal. I think he's one of the best fighters we've seen come out of Australia in a long time. He's phenomenal. Very technical, technically sound, defensively sound, strong, physical, great, great gas tank. Engine was awesome that night. Uh, th- that being said, congrats to him, but... Way too many punches taken by Tony Harrison in the end of that fight. Yeah, the referee the ref messed really, up. really let that go on way too long. Yeah. A lot of clean, hard punches from a young, strong guy. Um, it's hard to watch. It's hard it to tough. watch. That was that was too much. And Tony is a, a super tough. Goes out on his shield. Is always in there. He's been stopped before. We, we've seen him have you know have some trouble with the chin, which was gonna what you were saying was gonna be an issue in the fight, and, and, and it certainly was. But um, but yeah, I mean Tim Zhu's a real deal. He's he is a, a, a solid top contender now given his style zoo kind of walk forward um is he gonna be able to do that against charlo so i I think the string of fights that he's had so he had the terrell gaucha fight which he struggled early walking forward walks into a straight left hand and goes down you walk to a straight left hand against jamel charlo you you might not get up exactly um but you know it's a learning curve for him now like he passed that test in gaucha and it was probably harder than should have been. Yeah. Um, but then he gets Tony Harrison, makes it easier than it probably would have been or should have been or what we thought would, would be. Uh, so I, I think his progression in terms of his opponents, very good in order for getting uh, that Charlo fight and being successful. It's almost like a blessing in disguise for him. Absolutely. Charlo hurting he gets his more hand. Time. He gets more time. He gets more time, a, more gets experience. gets to fight a top five guy in, in Harrison. It makes the fight even bigger now. Dude, when you're a hometown guy and you've been stuck in your country, like I was stuck in my state on Long Island, yeah. <laughs> my state of Long Island. Um, it is a state to me. It's, it's, really, it's really difficult to make those first jump up to the world class. So the more you get, the better you get, the better experience you have. So I think for Tim Zhu, like you said, blessing in disguise, not getting the Charlo fight, getting the Harrison fight in between. Because listen, when you get the Charlo fight, that's it, man. Yeah. you got to be the best prepared possible. And I think that extra training camp, that extra fight was probably really beneficial. All right, that's a good fight at 154. It's another fight we get to add to the schedule, second half of the year. The boxing season. Boxing, we're in boxing season. Boxing starts. Season. If you guys don't know about that, it is boxing season now. Yes. Even though we don't have seasons, but we got a we got a great schedule. I think it's it officially has started. It's been a great year already. There's been so many really good our, fights. Our spring schedule is very strong. But like March 25th, Benavidez Plant is opening day. I'm looking at as for big fights. That's our season. kickoff. That's the big one. We're in preseason right now. Pre-season another pre-season. fight that that's looking to be added to the schedule. Is Fury and Usyk? Good Woo! God, man! Is I it, whoa, is it gonna happen? Yes, I I do believe it's gonna happen. It's just a matter of when now. Mm-hmm. Um, and how much? I What's the split gonna be? I can't take any more videos of Tyson Fury. 
T looking at the front facing Tyson Fury videos trigger me now. I want to throw my phone into the East River. I can't do it anymore. It's just first, he, he doesn't want to do a rematch clause. Uh, and then Usyk fires back, which I think Usyk's returns have been awesome, speaking yeah, in he's... English. Greedy belly, he's calling him. Yeah. I, I agree, 70-30, that's fine with me. And then Fury goes, wait, well, I don't want a rematch clause. And then Usyk's side says, you're the one that put the rematch clause in. I mean, I understand why Usyk would want a rematch. Um, he's the one that has two of the belts. George, uh, whatever, Frank Warren says the fight's happening. April 29th, he's dead set on it, Wembley. It's happening. Fury now says, I'm turning off my social media, and I'm going zero dark 30, and I'm training for April 29th in Wembley. So I guess we're getting this fight. I mean, it's painstakingly, some of the most painstaking negotiations. Well, Only because Fury, I, I, I love him in the ring. I, I can't stand him outside the ring. Well, I mean, yeah. Uh, a, a personality that big, it, it's got a life on it. <laughs> He's just messing with people. Yeah, because he can't. He just says something different every day. Exactly, and and he, he he's like a he's like a, a, a U.S. politician. <laughs> he understands the media minute is truly a minute. He lies every day. So everything he says, he doesn't care. He can just back it up. It's almost like Trump saying so many crazy things yeah. over and over and over again that you forget how many crazy things he said. So it's only the latest crazy thing. Yep. That's Tyson Fury. He's he's taking a page out of that book. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good fight. It's a great fight. We hope it happens. But you're right. I think uh, these 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 negotiations get long in the tooth, and people's interest wanes. And that's, I mean, I guess the fighters are doing the best they can, make the most money they can, but I don't know. As, as a fight fan, it's annoying. It, I, here's the thing with me. Uh, it's a great fight, obviously. Yeah. It is the it's an undisputed important fight. It's an important heavyweight fight. title. I haven't had one of these ever in the four belt era. Haven't had it since uh, Lennox Lewis. I will be so excited when we get the official, official announcement. But right now, I'm fine with the schedule that we have right now. Yeah, but but until then, we're gonna go Tyson Fury and go Zero Dark. Yeah. Until then. But like, if and, this, if we weren't announced. getting Benavidez plan or some of these like Tank Ryan or some of these other big Inaway Fulton, I would be like, I mean, everyone would be like, hang on this fight because we're mm -hmm. so hungry for a super fight. Like, yes, the boxing schedule's been good the last couple of, of years, but we're we're missing that that super fight. Yeah. Well, yeah we, it was uh, Fury Usyk super fight at Wembley. We, we're, we're missing the heavyweights. We need the heavyweight fights. We need those big ones. Yeah, Joshua Usyk was big, but it wasn't. It wasn't as big as like when Fury's involved, and obviously Usyk has come on, but by beating Joshua twice. But you put it at Wembley with eighty thousand and the four belts, that now becomes a big event. We need Fury on his home turf in a big fight. Yes, we need that. Yeah, I, I do love that it's not going to be at Saudi. Yeah, I love that it's at Wembley. Yeah. I, I love that it's going to be uh, an atmosphere. I don't think Frank Warren's done any Saudi fights, right? He keeps them all. I mean, they they tried. <laughs> they they exhausted every. They went to Saudi first, and they for some reason didn't want to put up the money, and it went back to Wembley. So as of right now, as we sit here and record this, it's a seventy thirty split. They're working on the rematch clauses, but it looks like April 29th. That's soon. That's what I think. That was that's what I think was the holdup. I, I I don't think Fury's scared. I don't think he's doesn't want the fight. I just don't think maybe he's training. And it's I would six much, weeks away. I would much rather Fury, instead of all this bullshit that he says in these videos, say, you know what, I, I, it's a big fight. I just don't think we have we don't have enough time to promote it properly for the 29th. We're gonna fight, but especially not with this with the boxing season that's going on. There's all these big fights. You don't want these. We don't want to be drowning each other out. That's one thing boxing is really bad at. It eats itself. It's yeah. like it's like the snake eating its tail. It, every opportunity there is, like we just we just it's dog eat dog, and that's that's how boxing is from the gym to the promotions, and it's very unfortunate because it hurts the sport on a whole. We we don't need to just jam pack everything now, and then the summer dies because there's nothing. Right, we're spreading it out. That's a, that's one thing that happens in boxing. You're right. It gets it gets a little top heavy, or it doesn't like. And if there was a real season and there was like a commissioner and a real schedule, we would pace it out a little mm -hmm, bit mm -hmm. and not have them all scrunched up. Or some nights, two fights in the same night. Yeah. And you don't know what to watch. Being a box fan is exhausting. <laughs> it certainly is. The best is, in my opinion, is when you get a nice, like, UK fight in the afternoon. Oh, Whether it's, best. like, better to be of, like, yard, and then uh -huh. at night there's, like, a Showtime or an ESPN. That's and then the you're like, you yeah, it, it sucks you for your family. <laughs> if you have a significant other, it sucks for them. But, like... Yeah, if your all, lady doesn't like boxing, yeah. Yeah, that's if a tough house. If you're a house. fight fan, those are the best ones. Those double headers are, are awesome. And we're going to get that May 6th, May 7th. we got uh, Canelo... Ryder, May 6th, and then 
Fulton in a way a couple hours later, 7 a.m. That's 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 cool. That's only only that can happen in boxing. Love that. Um, let's go over to Ryan Garcia and Tank Davis. They met face to face in New York City. They met face to face in Los Angeles. The New York City press conference was very subdued, very, zero trash talking. I think someone in their camps were like, "Hey, let's ratchet it up a level," because the LA one got crazy. That's chat and back and forth. Javanta puts his fist on Ryan's chin. He wants to see what it feels like. They're talking trash. Anytime a guy touches you before a fight, you touch back. is an issue. You gotta touch is him back, right? Is an issue. Oh yeah. Have yeah. you been getting to any any shoving matches? Any fisticuffs? Yeah, bunch, bunch. Um, first one happened in like I think my sixth pro fight. I fought this dude from Ohio, and uh, he mentioned me stepping on the scale and. Like, my heel was hanging off a little bit. Oh, you thought you were cheating. He thought I was cheating. And then, uh, so we got into it. We had a little shoving match at the commission in New York City. Uh, Jose Peralta, literally every time we were close, was nose to nose. We were actually on some HBO talk show. They had a picture of us (laughs) because he was so close to my face. He was, like, touching me, which is a problem. We got into a few pushing matches. The ref had to warn us. He goes, until you guys touch gloves, I do not want to see any physical stuff. (laughs) Because well, yeah. because we did it at the we did it at the, at the press conferences we did it at the weigh in anytime we're in the same room our our teams got into fights you don't like the you don't want to touch the money you don't want to mess with the money right yeah. like these guys I didn't think they were gonna get to an actual fight like before the, the uh, at the press conference that'd be stupid that's why Canelo and Plant like that was dangerous when you slap them and stuff you cut them you, too you mess up the fight and you mess up the money and we don't want that but we do want some moments we want some viral moments we want some animosity this fight is is tra- like I always suspected it was gonna be huge. Tank and Ryan, but I think it's going to a whole other stratosphere. I think it's sold out within minutes. Yeah, there's the a prices huge are insane. interest. We're going to be there in Las Vegas for this fight. There is a huge interest in this fight, and uh, Espinosa said something at the on the dais or whatever when he when he goes up there and speaks. This is the first fight, and Ryan Garcia has said this too right here in, in this room. This is the first fight, social media fight. Yeah, social media has been around for you know ten years now. But this is the first one where we're really going to tap into it. Ryan Garcia has a huge social media following. Tank Davis has a huge social media following. We're going to use it to promote this fight and make it maybe not the biggest fight in terms of like, it's not even a world title fight, but this is going to be a huge well, event a, because of fight. Instagram, because of TikTok, because of social media. Yeah, it's a crossover fight. We're going to bring in the younger audience with this. And I think that's really smart in Espinosa's part to, to utilize that. And that's one of the things the boxing has had trouble with forever is getting with the times. Mm-hmm. That's one thing UFC does so, so good. And and a lot of things, it's, it's so funny because UFC took the boxing model and improved it and has run away, run away with it. And boxing tries to take certain aspects from UFC. Oh, these guys are doing really good. They try certain th- certain things and just do it wrong. Now I think they're, get, they're getting the idea. They're getting with the times. You've got to use the social media strength. Uh, a lot of promoters are seeing, you're seeing a lot of fighters getting signed more from their social media than what their accomplishments in the ring are. Um, but now we have a bona fide good fight and both guys are popular this is this is what it's all about did you see power slap uh what what part of it i've actually canceled i've actually been watching some of those things dirtbag they are insane (laughs) horrible they're hard to watch it's it's not even a good watch they're hard to watch i didn't realize i didn't because i've never like sat down and watched a couple in a row and like i can't sit there and watch Dudes knock each other out back and forth. So we put a question out a few episodes back. We said, will Power Slap make it to a second season on TBS? They I thought not. it would because people are just, they, I mean, it, it's wildly popular. Where, though? I mean, not, the I ratings think... were so bad, TBS is not picking it up. Good. They're going to some, like, streaming <laughs> The service. American public's smarter yeah. than I thought. They're going to some streaming service, and it's funny because I see all these, like, Dana White sycophants that are putting out these tweets like, oh, Power Slap is sick. Like, you can tell they're just like, Mike Tyson put out a, an Instagram, and there were quotes on his caption. So yeah. whoever sent him, like, whatever person sent his, Mike Tyson's person, like, what to tweet, he just went copy and pasted it. So you they're think, trying you, so hard to... Do you think Mike Tyson tweets? No. no he has someone tweeting but for him. My point is, their UFC is trying so hard to... I don't to, understand to, that move. ...to sell this and just to, to, to really make it successful. It's not successful. It's going to it's gonna go away. There's got to be some, like, Russian oligarch money or something. I don't I, I don't understand what Dana's doing I with that. I think he... Anything outside of UFC with Dana White has tried has failed. He's very good at, at being the UFC president, and obviously 
has built a wagon uh, when it comes to their business model. But everything outside of that is, has been – so Power Slap's done, I think. And it should be because it's just heinous. It's – yeah, it's, it's very hard to watch. Uh, American fans are not ready for that. Uh, I don't think uh, – idiocracy has not taken over enough. That's good. That's kind of like gives me a little bit of hope. Eh, we'll see. <laughs> but no one tuned into this crap. We'll get there. We'll Every get... comment I see when I look at it, it's all the same. It's like, this isn't good. Stop. This isn't fun. Like, it's not funny. It's dangerous. You know what I think about? We used to... <laughs> and listen, this is a lot more serious, but like, it's it's not. It's all, it's very stupid. Uh, gunfights. Yeah, gun... <laughs> gunfights. How stupid is a gunfight? Western. Yeah, old Western gunfights. People love watching that stuff. Yeah, too. but that wasn't like... That was like not real civilization. Yeah, true. But I mean, but we're, that's what I mean. We're, we're 2023. Why are we is, slapping is, each we other? We are, dude, we're degrading. I, I'm telling you, 10 years is going to be something stupider. If not, five. Like what? Using like a wood piece of wood? Smack you over the head with it? I'm sure it's going on somewhere. All right. Um, lastly, before we say goodbye, can we please stop with this notion that the best don't fight the best anymore? Well, if 2023 has anything to say about it, that's kind of a mute point. We are in the middle of fight season. We are in the middle of an epic run. We've already had an awesome year to lead up to this. But starting next week, we get Benavidez plant. Necessary fight. A few weeks after that, Tank and Ryan. Huge event. Awesome fight. Fingers crossed. Fury Usyk, April 29th. N- necessary fight. Canelo Ryder. Big event. Big scene. It's Canelo Alvarez. The golden boy of boxing. Inouye Fulton, the next day, a couple hours after. Pound for pound status. May 20th, Haney Loma. A necessary fight for the lightweight undisputed division. Katie Taylor, Chantel Cameron. Not as cool as the original fight. But still best versus best. But still a good fight. Still a very good fight. Great pivot on Katie Taylor's part by... by Yes, and dangerous and risky. From Serrano to Cameron. Dangerous and risky. Huge. Okay, but wait, hold on. You can never say the women best that don't fight the best. That's always they that's, have to. That's completely off the, off the, off that argument. And then sometime in June we're getting Josh Taylor to Fima Lopez. Those cool, are cool fight. Those are bona fide 50 50 fights, best first best in their prime. Outside of the Canelo Ryder fight, these are all 50 50 fights, best fighting the best. I think it's just like an instinct of beaten down boxing fans, and I don't blame them. Mm-hmm. They're just like a pull cord. Like, well, it, best don't fight the best. Pull cord. Uh, it's not the... We're, I wish we were in the 80s. Pull cord. When are they going to start fighting each other? They are! Just have to pay attention. So, it's it's the bitter, broken down fans, like you said. It's it's the old heads who are not super current with the new stuff. Because that's one thing that I, I get... I get um, <coughs> um, pushback from a lot of older fans. Boxing kind of is an older fan base than UFC. Yeah. And they're having trouble with the new platforms. So, dealing with the... The, the broadcast. It's not the, easy watching yeah, the, 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 the networks and, and um, not networks and the, and the, the digi- apps. The digital apps and services. You know, like my, my dad doesn't know how to use his, his own app on his phone. So, and a lot of dads and grandpas don't. So I understand that. And they're still boxing fans. But so there's that. So there's those who maybe not be as current with the, with the, with, with current boxing because of that reason. And then there's just the haters. There are people who just like to be miserable. And Twitter's a great place for that. Yes. And Twitter, I have is to, the, Twitter is the playground for miserable people. I have to shoot them down. And I have to keep... Pro- I'll always be an advocate for, for these fights. But this is an un- unprecedented. This is yeah. amazing. Like, even years past, we got big fights. But, you know, like, last year, one of the bigger fights was uh, Canelo Triple G. Mm-hmm. And then we all knew that Canelo was going to walk over him. These are 50-50 fights. Yeah, yeah. But it, w- it wasn't even that Canelo walked over him. It's just that it was a boring fight. It just wasn't. Yeah, it ended up being a dud. But these are good ones, so I don't want to hear that anymore. That is our show for today. Ronnie, you there? You got anything for us, Ronnie? We should do more shows in person often. I love it. Having Chris here, having you here is awesome. Not looking at you through a Zoom lens. (sighs) Going to need a pay upgrade, though, guys. This this New York weather is not for me. (laughs) It's going to be tough to get you out of Florida. Uh, The reason Chris is here is because we have a lot of content coming to the Inside Boxing Live YouTube page, fight previews, uh, fun short-form stuff. People have been asking for it, so we're we're, we're listening. Uh, So keep it locked to the Inside Boxing Live page Uh, this weekend. If you go, if you do want to watch Zerto and Gabe Rosado, we're gonna watch it because what else? Because because yeah. we have a disease and it's called love for boxing. Yeah, exactly. Two week uh, two weeks from now we get uh, the start of opening day of fight season. Benavides plant. A lot of good stuff coming your way as always. Thanks for keeping it locked. Uh, protect yourselves at all times. Keep your heads up at all times. Stay out of those DMs. Vote for us. Vote for us. Vote for, us. Vote for Donnelly. <laughs>